I'm Tamara and today we are going to be making a heavy duty grocery bag. Now I have a lot of different grocery bags that I have purchased over the years. I have also sewn different totes and I wanted different features from different bags so that is why I created this particular bag. It is definitely a heavy duty bag. It has really good sturdy straps that go all the way underneath the bag for proper strength and support. It has a boxed bottom. I'm going to try and show you here. This bag is full. So it has a boxed bottom, which I'm really proud of because I find that this is the perfect size to be able to load your groceries into. It has a leak proof or at least leak resistant bottom. I am going to test this out at the very end of the video to find out if it's actually leak proof. So stick around to the end. I'm going to pour a cup of water into this bag and we will see if it goes through the bottom seam. And of course, another important thing, at least for me with a grocery bag, is that it stands up on its own. So this particular bag has nothing in it and it stands up, which is super helpful when you are loading your grocery bags. You don't want a floppy grocery tote for that. So we've added some interfacing and of course the fabric that we've used for the bottom and even the canvas fabric helps it all to stand up. And it's so cute. I just love how this bag has turned out. So let's jump on in to figuring out how to sew this bag and then we'll test it out. You will need some canvas fabric for the outer portion of your bag, some cotton fabric for your lining, some all-purpose sewing thread, as well as some webbing that is a mixture of polyester and cotton. You will need some single-sided interfacing as well as a polyester canvas that has a waterproof backing. A few things to note before you get sewing. It is important that you pre-wash your fabrics. So the bottom of our bag is actually going to be made out of polyester fabric that has a waterproof lining to it. And polyester doesn't really shrink that much, whereas the canvas fabric that you have, kind of this cute strawberry fabric here, that canvas fabric will definitely shrink. And then my lining fabric is a cotton fabric, and again, that can shrink as well, and they can shrink at different rates. Now for the actual handles themselves, I highly recommend that you look for a mixed blend. So I chose a handle that has a little bit of polyester in it and cotton in it, because then it still has that soft feel to it. It hangs really nice. It's not super shiny, looks pretty, but it's not going to shrink in the wash to the same degree that a cotton strap might shrink. I do want to mention that I have a blog post where I have written the cut list and the measurements and the final size. All of that is in that blog post and that is linked in the description down below. So you can definitely check out that blog post if you don't want to keep coming back to this video, although I appreciate your support. Let's get sewing. Cut your outer canvas fabric as well as your lining fabric at 19 and a half inches high by 20 and a half inches wide. You will need two pieces from each type of fabric. You will also need to cut out two pieces from your interfacing. My interfacing happens to be 20 inches high, so I didn't want to waste interfacing. I made sure to cut it 19 and a half inches, and then I just have that 20 inch height instead of the 20 and a half inch that I cut my fabric to and that's totally fine. I'll just center it in the center and it will be no big deal. So if your interfacing is similar, you go right ahead and do the same. Then you will cut your polyester canvas fabric at 10 inches high by 20 and a half inches wide and you will cut out two pieces from that fabric as well. To prep your lining fabric, you will need to attach your interfacing to the wrong side of your cotton fabric. Make sure of course that that shiny glue side is facing down towards the fabric and follow your interfacing instructions to press it in place. Now we need to prep our outer fabric. So we need to attach our polyester canvas strip to our canvas fabric. So line up your canvas fabric so that it is the 20 and a half inches wide. Then you will mark nine inches up on both sides. Just draw a little marking. Take your polyester fabric and lay it right side face down, shiny side face up, laying it above your nine inch marking. Then you will draw a half inch seam allowance 
along that top edge so that you have a guide when you are sewing. Finish pinning it in place and then you will sew along that marked line. To do this I like to use a Teflon sewing foot. So right here you can see we've got this shiny side here that's the back of the fabric and then right here is the nice front to the fabric. So when you are sewing where the actual sewing foot is laying on this plastic that's when you'll use your Teflon sewing foot. If you don't have a Teflon sewing foot and you don't want to buy a Teflon sewing foot, that's okay. What you'll do is you'll lay a piece of tissue paper on top of that, whatever tissue paper you've got, it could even be gift wrap, and then you'll be able to sew with your regular sewing foot across the top of that and then just tear away the tissue paper when you're done. Once you've sewn the polyester canvas piece in place, then you can finger press it so that it is laying down so the right side is no longer showing and you're seeing the nice side to your canvas fabric. To help it lay down, I will also give it a nice press. Just make sure that your iron is on the correct settings so that it doesn't start melting your fabric. Then pin or clip that top flap down and then we will sew a top stitch across that top edge. I did that at a quarter inch seam allowance. Again, start and stop with the back stitch. Now you will attach your lining. So lay your lining right sides together with your outer fabric and pin along that top edge. You will sew a half inch seam allowance across that top edge, starting and stopping with a back stitch. Then with your iron or even just finger pressing, you can open up that seam allowance. Now it's time to add the straps. I bought three yards of this particular webbing here and I will have everything linked in the blog post which is linked in the description of this video. I just folded this strap in half and cut it. That will create the perfect length for this grocery bag. Next, line up these straps along your outer canvas fabric. You are going to measure six inches from the outer edge in towards the outer edge of your strap and then pin your strap in place. Make sure that your strap is not twisted when it goes across and over to the other side. And of course this other side you will also measure six inches in from that outer edge in towards your strap. Then measure from that top seam of your canvas fabric where it meets the lining. Measure down one inch and draw a marked line. I did this with my friction pen because it is a pen that I can iron the marks away later. Just make these marks on both sides of both both straps because you are going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance starting at the bottom of your strap sew all the way up to the top marking turn sew across and then sew back down a quarter of an inch again all the way down to that bottom edge this will secure your strap in place very nicely once your straps are in place then just grab an iron or some water if you used a water soluble marking tool and just get rid of those marked lines so this is what your pen panel will look like at this point in the process. You will make two of these panels and then you will lay them right sides together. Then just line up those side seams. So the seam where the polyester fabric lines up and of course where the lining fabric lines up. Clip that in place and then clip all the way around this entire project, leaving the four corners free of pins. Now it's time to create our boxed bottom. We are going to measure four inch by four four inch squares on all four corners. You will trace them in place and then cut away those four inch squares. Do this on the canvas side as well as on the lining side. Now you can finish clipping around your entire project. Then you will sew along the bottom edge, leaving your two squares that you've cut away alone. Then you will sew along your side edge. And of course you're starting and stopping with a back stitch doing all of these seams. Then you will go across the lining's bottom edge, again leaving your squares open. Don't sew them shut. And then on one side of your lining you do need to leave a four inch gap. So I will mark this with a different style pin. That way I remember when I'm sewing around my project to stop and not sew across that opening. So just start with the back stitch, stop at your pin with a back stitch, and then start again on the other side where your pin is, back stitch, and then sew all the way to the end, stopping with the back stitch once again. 
And this is what it will look like at this stage of the process. We have our opening in our lining and all four corners have not been sewn. Now on the linings side of our fabric, we're just going to line up those two seams on the corner, clip that in place, and then you can kind of press along that open edge to create a nice flat seam that you can clip along. And you are going to do that on both of those corners for the lining. You will sew a half inch seam allowance across those two edges. Now we are going to do our boxed corners on the canvas side pretty much the same except that our bottom edge is quite thick and bulky because of all of our layers. So instead of opening up your seam allowance you're just going to tuck your seam allowance in one direction and then snug it up with the other seam allowance folded to the opposite direction. That way you're avoiding too much bulk at your sewing machine. So clip it in place that way then clip across that top edge and sew a half inch seam allowance across both of those edges on both of those corners. And now that you've boxed all four corners, it's time to turn the project right side out. And take a moment with your finger to just push out all of the corners on the lining fabric as well as the canvas fabric. Then you can line up that opening, clip it, and sew it shut. All right, you guys, I'm getting excited. We are almost there and we are almost about to pour that cup of water into this project to see if it's waterproof. But before we do that, you'll need to do a few more seams. So just push your lining inside and then clip around the entire top edge. Then you'll take that to your sewing machine and you will sew a quarter inch seam allowance around the entire top edge. Oh, and before I actually sewed across that top edge, I did pin away my straps to make sure that I did not accidentally sew over them. Oh, and to make this part easier, I do suggest removing that little portion on your sewing machine so you can turn your tote bag around just that little bit easier. Now this step is optional, but I think since it's a heavy duty grocery bag, it is helpful to do this step. You are going to see where your strap seam ends and you will measure down from that strap an inch and a half. Again, with a friction pen or a water soluble marking pen, you'll just draw a little line. Because what we are doing is we are sewing an X formation on top of our strap to give it that extra sturdiness. So you'll start on the top edge where your seam is. You'll sew down to that bottom corner, across, and then back up. You will start and stop with a back stitch and do this on all four straps. And this is what the final project looks like. You can see here, I've got that X formation sewn in place. I've got a really nice boxed bottom and I've got that waterproof lining. At least I hope it's waterproof. Let's find out. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I hope this works. But before I pour this cup of water into this bag to see how waterproof it actually is, I've got a question for you. If you like these types of sewing tutorials and you want more, what kinds of tote bag tutorials specifically are you looking for in the future? This one is obviously a heavy duty grocery bag, but do you want a library bag? Do you want one with a zipper or with a pocket? Let me know so that I can get working on future tutorials for you. All right, drum roll please, maybe hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because I'm about to pour a cup of water into my project to see if it withstands my sewing. I'm really nervous. All right, let's do this. Can you hear that? It's in there. It's not leaking. Not yet anyway. So I think if you end up with, you know, a punctured milk container or a popped soda can, which has happened to me in the past, I think that this bag will uh, withstand that leak and you will be able to get your groceries out and not have, you know, stinky milk all over your car. So I hope that you appreciated that little science project. Can I call it a science project? Sewing science project. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Should I show you inside the bag? I can try, but I don't want to pour water on my camera. Let's see, let's see if I can do this. It's a dark inside. 
Can you even see? I don't want the water to spill. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. I can't really show you, but it's in there. You witnessed it. I showed you, okay? There's water in there. And I'm still impressed that it's not leaking yet. All right. If you like that experiment, hit that like button. Thanks so much.